What's up, besties? I hope you're having a phenomenal day. Um, peasants. I have been hyped up for this film for years. Uh, I saw the trailer uh, for it in like uh, 2021, I think. And was just immediately excited for it. And recently, soon after the premiere, uh, because this video might take a bit to make, I've watched it and I just have to talk about it here. Um, uh, first thing is, I absolutely recommend you go see it with your own eyes. Uh, this is a yes a review, but even though there are some things I want to nitpick, this was an incredible experience and I don't think just hearing someone describe it will be enough to feel it, will be enough to feel all of it. Um, it's absolutely not spoiler free, uh, but I think that if spoilers can ruin a film, then the film is not uh, that great to begin with. I won't tell you the ending, but if you don't want to know any of the plot before watching, I'll leave this video for later. <laughs> um, or don't. But if you don't mind, like, please stay. <laughs> Personally, I knew all of the plot before watching and it still had a huge emotional effect on me in the end. I remember my heart just pounding so hard in some moments that it was almost physically painful. But let's start from the beginning. Um, it's rejection, I guess. The film, Peasant, the film Peasants is based on a Nobel Prize winning book with the same title, written by the Polish author uh, Władysław Raymond and published in the early 20th century, and has been directed and written by D.K. Welshman and Hugh Welshman. Uh, the creators of Loving Vincent, and it's a co-production by Breakthrough Films in Poland, Art Shot in, Lithu Art Shot in Lithuania, and Digital Craft in Serbia. Um, what gets everyone immediate attention is the way it has been made, because it's an animated film and all of the frames have been hand-painted in oils. Or to be more exact, first they recorded it, uh, let's say, normally, with actors, not film set. Um, in the outside scenes, they actually used a lot of green screen and the village was apparently 3D modeled. But I don't think it's visible through the paintings. Um, I only found out after watching. Uh, then over uh, 100 oil painters in four studios in Poland, Lithuania, Ukraine and Serbia have uh, hand-painted uh, 40,000 out of, out of 76,000 uh, frames. Uh, obviously, this doesn't mean that they made uh, 40,000 separate paintings. Uh, in many cases, they would just change parts of the same painting from uh, one frame to another. Which gives, a, which gives a very interesting effect uh, where any movement feels amplified because anything that has uh, moved on video gets repainted on a new frame and it's not as smooth as in real life. Um, meanwhile, everything that wasn't supposed to move deliberately uh, stays perfectly still because it's untouched. And, and for the other 36,000 frames, they use the method of in-betweening, also known as twinning, which is a process in animation that involves creating intermediate frames, uh, called in-betweens, uh, between, between two keyframes. Um, you can even use it while animating in, while animating in like Adobe Photoshop. Uh, in fact, I did while making this leaf animation here. Uh, but it is obviously a less sophisticated and detailed version of it. Uh, this method is used to make smooth uh, transitions between frames so that the movement doesn't feel chopped up. Uh, anyone who has done any frame-by-frame -frame animation will probably know this and I'm not an expert on that uh, whatsoever. I just want to give an explanation that everyone can understand. Um, the, re the regular frame rate in animation is like 24, uh, sometimes 20 frames per second, but in the peasant there is only 12. Uh, one of the film producers said that this is because if it was too smooth, it would look like someone has just put a filter on the film. And honestly, I agree, I like this effect and you know, yeah, that filter part also feels true. <laughs> 
Um, some of the shots in the film were made to resemble paintings from the turn of the 19th and 20th uh, centuries, with an, with an emphasis on young Poland artists, which, is, which was a modernist period in Polish art. Uh, here are some examples of that on the screen. Um, it, it, centers, it centers around the story of a young girl named uh, Jagna Paczasiewna, uh, played by Kamila Urzędowska, who gets pressured into marrying a rich older man, Maciej Borena, played by Jarosław Baka. With all that info out of the way, let's get to the actual review. Um, I came to the cinema already knowing the story. Uh, I have read the book back in high school. It is an amazing book. I didn't, it didn't get that Nobel Prize for the reason. Uh, my, my main feeling is that the visuals are breathtaking, um, beyond my expectations, and that, and that is saying a lot since, like I said, I was hyped up for this film for years. Uh, the music was also amazing, astonishing, uh, incredible. I actually have a list of positive words in my notes up because I'm trying to wish you a nice day in my intro. Uh, differently every time uh, in every video and it's getting hard to come up with uh, those <laughs> but the visuals and music can be described with all those words okay it's sh chef's kiss one small thing that really annoyed me and i'm not alone in that is some of the casting choice uh, specifically Małgorzata Kozłowska who plays Organistina, uh, which in Polish means the wife of an organist. Uh, it's a very interesting language thing. We don't really call women after their husbands' professions anymore, but we used to. Another thing that's dying out is changing the surname depending on family relations. It's like very related one to, add one to another. Uh, so we used to add Ova or Ina in the surnames of married women, being a wife of, which you can still hear sometimes, uh, especially all the women use it for themselves, and Ufna or Anka for those not married, meaning a daughter of, uh, which is sporadic, I dare say, can be seen as disrespectful. I had this one priest insisting on using that for me, and I hate it. It's like, eh, don't. I don't know. Anyway, because I went on a philology student tangent here. Uh, back to Kozuchowska. Mm. I'm recording my videos in English, so I guess my target audience won't care, but uh, to many Polish people, she solidified herself as a comedy actress. Uh, what she's most known for is a sitcom called Regin KPL or Family PL in English. <laughs> Spokojnie, porozmawiajmy, spokojnie, spokojnie. No widzę, widzę, odłóż go, spokojnie go odłóż. Odłóż go spokojnie, proszę cię. Where uh, she actually also plays the mother of character played by Maciej Musiał, just, in, just like in the peasants. Uh, here he is playing Yasho, a young priest. But I don't even know if it's that her acting was that bad or just that she's so characteristic that I can't imagine her playing something serious because I just associate her with that. Um, another thing about her that annoyed me, and that's almost definitely not her fault. Uh, they probably had stylists responsible for stuff like that, was that she was wearing a wig that somehow looks cheap even after being hand painted in oils. And it's really a pity because it's little things like that that make that uh, maybe undermine some of the excellent work because I'm absolutely not blaming the painters for that. But wigs can absolutely look so real that you have no idea that it's not even real hair. So like, I don't know they, I don't know why they, I don't know why they did it so poorly. <laughs> Another thing is I've seen some people saying that the story should have focused around a different character. Uh, Hanka Borunova, played by uh, Sonia Mitlisa, and I disagree, I think that if we're choosing one character, Jagna is the obvious choice. Her story is more dramatic, she's the femme fatale, she's uh, more morally complicated, uh, which we love to see, especially in the book. Uh, she's the one whose story I wanted to see the most here, but I really think Hanka was not done justice here. Yeah, I agree on that. Uh, she was presented as self-interested and maybe too focused on the money, but she really is a hero of the story if you like. Actually, in the book. 
And like I said, Yagna is more morally complicated. She doesn't want to work. Uh, she willingly has a romance with Antek, having no regards for his wife, um, Hanka, uh, because while it's hard for me to blame her for hurting her own husband, since she didn't really want to marry him in the first place. Uh, you know, he pretty much just bought her. Uh, but poor Hanka is also a victim in the story. Um, I think another thing that makes me satisfied with Yagna being the main character is that she's just different, you know, outstanding. Uh, she's rich and beautiful, that's for start. Uh, but also she just has a personality that doesn't fit there. She's not focused on what everyone else is focused on, uh, which is a privilege in this community. She, uh, since she's wealthy, she doesn't have to work for her survival. She doesn't conform to their version of morality, but also she's an artist. She creates her little cutouts and decorations and decorates her house with them. Uh, she made the necklace that she's uh, wearing throughout the film. And uh, she's emotional and cares even for the insignificant, uh, for other people creatures. Uh, in the film she takes care of a stork or even helps out a little bit in that feather on his back. And at the same time, and at the same time, uh, you know, she's a hedonist. She doesn't. She does engage in an affair, and she's incapable of any self-criticism. Uh, she doesn't regret the pain that she's caused. She didn't even seem to notice that. Uh, she only focused on her own wants. I don't want this to sound like she's insane because the fact that she's not completely innocent uh, in all this doesn't justify the treatment that she got in any way. Uh, she's the victim in all of this. Uh, she sticks out from her community and becomes hated by them and I know that it's not uncommon to present stories of people who are different in some ways but I think it's just because we like those stories and because many of us have at least some moments often more than that when they can relate to the alienation cool love main character syndrome if you want but I think a lot of people also just want to be special and feel special and and different in the crowd. It's not entirely her fault that she's like this. Um, this is not elaborated on in the film and I don't think it, it needed to be. Uh, there wasn't enough time for that and it wouldn't affect the message. Uh, the person who can also bl be blamed uh, a lot for all this is her mother, Dominikova, played in the film by uh, Eva Kastrzyk. And here uh, I think she was excellent. Like, I really liked her in, in this. And I also associate her more with like comedy roles in my head. I, I'm... See, she's... I don't know, she just fits this reality when it comes to her voice and her face and everything. Mm. She's just great in here, in this. But, uh, she treated the adult brothers of Yagna terribly. Uh, it's actually shown in the film that she's very hostile to them. And and she treats them like farmhands, uh, but she treats her daughter completely differently. Uh, you know, she was this Yagna was the spoiled golden child, uh, while her brothers had to do all the hard work, in, including the work that would typically be done by women. She didn't have to do anything. <laughs> she was uh, Dominikova was very controlling uh, of all of them and their lives. Uh, so. Yagna both was raised to disregard work. Uh, she was even told in the film that she wasn't made to be poor. Uh, that was Dominikova's argument for the arranged marriage. But also she wasn't assertive whatsoever. Um, uh, in the in the book, she kind of had more choice over the, the marriage, but she still just decided to trust her mother. And she didn't say no. <laughs> And in the end, uh, Yagna is detached from the family re reality. She has no close friends. Everyone around everyone around her was focused on things that were important, that were important for them as peasants. Uh, you know, the land, the farm work. You know, things she wasn't interested in, with. Uh, throughout the film, she constantly shows that she herself is not a materialist. Uh, she likes to surround herself with pretty things, but she doesn't care about the land, for example. She actually ends up giving back the land that she got from Burina to Hanka. She ended up being a victim of the society and men who used her inability to say no. 
Well, you know, in this traditional way, all responsibility for the affair falls on Yagna and not Antek, who was also very willing. And when it all started, he was already married and with children, and she wasn't, uh, and she didn't want to marry Brina, and it was him who kept on pursuing her, and he raped her. And, you know, that's, uh, again, when it comes to, like, the acting, Robert, Robert Gulacic did great. He was, he was so terrible, like... Oh my god, I hated this character, and he just made it so <laughs> realistic, I... And same with other men, she didn't force herself on anyone. In the film, she's actually even more passive than in the book. Uh, I remember that I, ca that I came out uh, of that cinema angry because uh, some couple sitting next to me was making jokes about her being a slut and deserving the treatment she got. Uh, it's really sad because one would hope that we have moved on from this type of sexism, but not really. Uh, maybe we are not as brutal as the peasants were, but some of that mindset is apparently still he here and that is really scary to think about. Uh, and I have this out of fear now because on some level I can relate to her and I'm really scared of being like her. I, I don't want to be selfish, but a selfish person probably isn't capable of knowing they are selfish. Their ego won't let them like objectively look at that. Uh, I didn't work much in my life, at least not physically, you know, some fruit picking or light farmer, cleaning, stock, stock taking, but never full time for a longer period of time. Uh, I'm still a student and I'm enjoying my studies and I'm living off my parents and a scholarship. Uh, I never had to worry about all my needs being met. And, so, and some ones too, you know, a comfortable middle class life. Like, am I spoiled? Because the thing is, you know, she was rich, but she was rich for a peasant. She wasn't an aristocrat, right? And I can definitely see myself in her more positive or moral or morally neutral traits, like having an artistic soul, being caring about animals, sensitive, you know, some lack of assertiveness and problems in normal human interactions that lead to some level of alienation from society. You know, the two last ones are negative traits. Yeah, but not morally wrong, and I think most people can admit that to not being perfect, but we all want to see ourselves as morally good. Because there are these negative traits that we just, you know, want to be able to say we have, because we see them like, as like, you know, I'm so much of a mar martyr, you know, I am a people pleaser, I am an overthinker, I am, a, you know, there are these things that are technically negative, but also... <laughs> And I think the lack of assertiveness kind of falls under that. Um, um, she is a very complicated and complex character, as all people are. And the way I relate to her scares me. Now, my love life is non-existent. Uh, I have never even held hands romantically. <laughs> I know I know I haven't tutored on anyone. I didn't even have like a chance to. And to be honest, I don't understand cheating. I, I, I don't think the pleasure of doing something like that is worth all the hurt it costs. And I, I also, I don't know, I'm, again, I'm awkward socially. I, I could not, uh, like, you know, while knowing I have someone who, who values me so much, I, I could not <laughs> do that. I, like, I, I know I never did anything this bad, but so am I hurting people around me without seeing that? Like, in other ways? Especially that I do take issues with man many common stances on morality, like she seems to exist outside of the, uh, the peasant's morality, and, you know, just like her, I stick out from a lot of pe the people surrounding me in this regard. My views stem largely from, like, consecutive like from like consequentialism and I do not uh, follow authorities no, no matter how saintly they could be I won't follow a rule until I have a really good reason to and I'm surrounded by a lot of like people with more dogmatic stances and who will like look at a lot of things that I believe and they're like that is more <laughs> but what if I'm wrong like what if I I don't think I am, but I never really think I'm wrong until I'm proven that without any doubt, like, in my mind, I'm always right, right? Sometimes I just have a sort of fear. Um, 
I guess this is a part of the emotional impact this film has had on me, like this. I don't know, I don't want to relate to her, but I do. <laughs> on so many, like, she, she's just like me. <laughs> now, the main star of the show, we all waited for it, the animation. This is the selling point, after all, like, you know, this film isn't even the first coronation of the book. Really. There is no other version, and it's still good, it's just a bit different. Um, it's honestly more impressive than in the Loving Vincent film, uh, not because that not because that art style is better or something, I, I think I made my opinion on modern art clear on this channel. Uh, though, you know, the uh, Yang Poland is also modern, it's just more realistic. It just clearly requires more work for each frame. Like, was it worth it? Uh, I think so. I th thought it was going to get annoying because everything moves like that, but after a few minutes my eyes got used to it. I don't know what to make of it uh, meritorically. Because in the Loving Vincent there is an easy answer of uh, this is how he saw the world. Um, this, defin this definitely isn't how the peasants saw the world. Uh, they wouldn't even see much art in this style in general. Mm, like, in their lives. <laughs> like, they didn't surround themselves with it, right? Um, I think when it comes to the atmosphere, chef's kiss. Uh, especially that in the modern historical films, uh, things tend to look uh, really fake. And uh, here, except for that stupid wig, the painting half uh, worked like a photo that made it all unified and paradoxically more real and submersive. Uh, I've seen people complaining about Yagna wearing so much makeup, but I think that an artist in those days could decide to paint like that to make her like extra beautiful. Um, you know, I think it has to do with how in modern modern costumes we use a lot of like polyester and dyes that wouldn't exist back in those days. And I don't know, we, we can just can't replicate it properly <laughs> a, a, a lot of times. Now, when I when I think it was supposed to get trippy, it worked wonders. My favorite scene uh, in this aspect is the wedding wedding scene. Because we have Bodena just spinning Yagna around and controlling her movements, almost playing with her like she's a re like she's a toy, and I was getting busy myself because because of the animation, the fast movement, and some some more expressive brushstrokes with blurry background and amazing camera work. In my opinion, the loud, energetic music, the voices, everything. Truly, it was an experience to watch this on a big screen. Another, re another reason why this scene hit me is because of the contrast, because despite of, like I said, the main character not enjoying this really, <laughs> seeing this fun around, uh, which isn't book accurate, they did it more, I think, to contrast an uh, this to another dancing scene later in the movie, the same with Antek, uh, when uh, she was, when she was enjoying, when she was enjoying it, uh, to the point of getting in trouble. But here, despite of what her face was showing, uh, I felt like I sort of forgot about the tragedy going on. That she essentially just got sold into an arranged marriage with a man thrice her age. And I kind of lost and I kind of got lost in the happy music and the craziness and everyone around me was having fun and being drunk. Almost as if I was also drunk and then suddenly we moved to a quiet place. She's sitting on a bed, and her new husband is about to rape her. Like, she clearly doesn't want to have sex, but now they're married, so he can do whatever he wants. And we are not being shown it explicitly, but the silence was very, very loud. And what adds another layer of sadness for me is that in those times, he would not be considered a bad husband. Nobody cared for marital rape. That's one thing. Uh, maybe the age gap would turn some heads. Again, uh, he's thrice her age. <laughs> he could be her grandfather, but it wasn't outside of the norm. And he didn't know that she didn't want to marry him. Him like she was nice. She was nice to him all the time. She didn't like express that much. 
and he too uh, just like her mother spoiled her uh, he allowed her not to work while he himself st still was working uh, he bought her expensive scarves he gave her gave her necklaces like after his previous wife he he ignored all the rumors about her like even before getting married and actually got so mad at his own son repeating that to him like like he, he slept with her it's one of the reasons why he kicked him out like he was so set on defending an or her honor um it's really complicated and this was a curse for her but he did love her and you know that's another scary part um Coming back to the painting, a huge benefit of it was that they used it to incorporate amazing paintings uh, created by artists from that period into the film. Another thing is I think uh, craftsmanship like that is just has its value. And the creators got accused of using AI to make, to make uh, some, some of the frames, but they said that they tried and they weren't able to teach a program to do that. At least they, at least they were honest, uh, I guess. And I'm glad it didn't work out. Uh, we're AI uh, quote unquote art uh, haters on this channel. Uh, the intermediate, the intermediate frames uh, that I mentioned er earlier, uh, so the frames that are in between the UN's painting on the canvas by hand and. Uh, were made in a digital program, uh, but also by people. Um, you know, in, in the age of like these, the AI art coming to be something that artists fear about and uh, that you know, takes people's jobs, uh, I think it just has some extra value to have it made by hand. Plus, you know, the book contains some really painterly descriptions of nature. Uh, I'm not going to show it to you because this is not because this is not a book review and I don't want it to be too long but I think that's one more reason why the painting makes some sense. One problem with this I guess is that they apparently underpaid the painters. Uh, they paid them from 80 to 300 to 300 is what they per frame depending on how complicated it was. I don't know what the wages were in countries other than Poland and how that compares to an expected payment for this sort of task, so I'll focus on those. And in Euro, that's 1792 to 6721. In American dollars, it's 1897 to 7116, which would be crazy cheap for a painting. Our minimum wage is uh, 5.10 uh, Euro or 5.40 dollars per hour. Uh, I saw different articles copied from each other, uh, literally like the same sentence saying that uh, paint, painting each frame took five to eight hours. I don't know if that's confirmed because it's again, they copy pasted the same sentence, uh, sentence and I didn't find like anyone <laughs> saying that differently. But if it were true, only the more complicated frames would pay minimum wage or more. Um, now I know that the artists weren't forced into any way, in any way to participate. And you know they could just get a, even if they couldn't get a painting job that would pay them properly, they maybe could get a different one. But let's maybe just have enough respect for people to pay the minimum wage for their work. Like, okay, I'm not accusing the people in charge of doing something illegal. Uh, I know that it's not illegal because they were like, doing contract work. I I just mean like something like that. I'm I'm not good at all. Um, I I just think this is if this is true, it's wrong. Right? Not illegal. So. Yeah, this is not a legal accusation, and I'm just giving you the numbers I found online that might be not true. Don't take my words like a legal commentary. Uh, okay, so I need to correct myself here, not to spread mis misinformation. Um, I have found in one of the interviews, uh, one of the creators said that creating each painting took from two to four hours. So it's not the five to eight number that everyone else was giving. Um, and, uh, so that will give you at least 40 zlotych per hour, um, and, uh, you know, 
I've seen people com I've seen people complaining regardless because it's like oh that's still a two because it's like art. but I think this is false more and the craftsmanship that's like the first thing you know they were recreating something and second I have never been paid this much for hour I am not taking anyone's complaining uh, if that's little fine a different job <laughs> I'm sorry that's that's not cheap okay that's not cheap that's that's like twice the minimum wage so um. One more nitpick. Show, don't tell. I, I don't like the fact that they just put the names of the seasons on the screen. I think they could just give us some longer shots of nature, so it's obvious, or so it's obvious. Or uh, at one point they had like a time lapse looking thingy uh, with snow melting. That was a really nice indication that the winter is ending. Uh, I get that these seasons are important to anyone who has not read the book, it, it is divided into four parts. Autumn, winter, spring and summer. And it depicts how the peasant's uh, life differs depending on the seasons, and I'm pretty sure there is an argument to be made that it also has a met metaphorical layer, which with how it overlaps with like the specific events in the book, and you know, stages in life of the characters. Um, it is important, I just don't like that it was spoon fed like that. Uh, plus, uh, the leather is me off beats. I don't like the font anymore. No. Um, I don't know, I think they could have thought it out differently. No, this is a very graphic movie, as you probably can guess now. It has several sexual assault and violence scenes. I've seen some younger people saying that they won't recommend it because of that. And I have some respect for it. If you don't want to see that, you shouldn't be forced. Although, obviously, this doesn't mean art shouldn't depict those things. And I'd argue that there is value in pushing ourselves to watch films or read things that contain things like that. I don't think we should always stay in our comfort zone. It was a brutal society. Uh, brutal times. Uh, I guess the problem could be that a lot of schools are taking high schoolers on field trips to see it. Uh, my sister went with her class, for example. So that's like pressuring teenagers to see something quite graphic. Uh, this is on the creators, this is the schools. I think it's different when they make you read, read about brutal things uh, like in school and a whole another level when you see and hear it because, again, this thing is very immersive. Mm. I took extended college back in high school and I remember how when we got to uh, 20th century literature, how training it was to constantly read about all the horrific things that happened in that time period. I understand that this has an effect on us, but at the same time, I don't think that this is a reason to refuse to attain some knowledge entirely. Then just be mindful about our mental health while doing it. Sometimes we need to take a break, maybe. But I think when it comes to art that has value, we can't lump it, well, lump it uh, in with like, gore videos that people online like to share for like shock value. It's not about the gore, and you know I, I get that watching those is like just. Oh, it does, it's harm your psyche, but th th this is not the same. And I want to defend the brutality being there. Uh, it is book accurate, it is historically accurate, and it is representative of the art made in that time of history. Teachers like using this book to explain the concept of naturalism, which is a movement in literature and art created in the second half of the 19th century. The main goal of which was to like faithfully represent life, also in its drastic manifestations, like you know, uh, bleh. Uh, <laughs> Basically, the society is uh, part of nature, and its laws determine the course of how it uh, functions. And the way some artists like to represent that was with putting some like cats here and there, <laughs> not entirely metaphorically. Um, in the world of peasants is brutal, um, it's survival, survival, it's survival of the fittest, because you like how nature impacts the people, like, you know, <laughs> how, just like what I said earlier. 
this is like the reason why there are so many arguments over Machi Buren's wealth. Uh, he doesn't want to give it to uh, anyone where he's still alive to keep himself safe. You know, in the book we meet the character of Agatha, uh, who did just that. She gave her possessions to her children, and the first and in the and the first scene in the book is her leaving the village because they just kicked her out for autumn and winter because. As an old woman, she's no use for them, and you know they didn't want to have to feed her. Um, and she can only survive by begging strangers, and comes back in the spring to help out with what she can. I think there's actually an allusion to her at the beginning of the film. In one of the dialogues, we hear we overhear someone say with a like shocked voice, <gasps> and you know someone's in, we po- in Polish even a uh, moment who's. Oh, children? So we know someone got treated unfairly. Her side plot ends in a very bittersweet way. Uh, she died at her relative's house. But, is, but this is how she wanted to die, in, in her home village. Not away, like, wandering about. Um, uh, near the beginning of the film, there is a scene of Boruna killing his cow. He had to do it because it was sick. Again. To give us an example of the threat being cruel and you know brutality that is like daily you know. in the book there is even a scene where a character named Kuba who is but in his farmhead attempts to amputate his own leg with an axe and then bleeds out to death while everyone is having fun at the wedding because he got shot while poaching and was scared of going to the doctors. Brutal This book is brutal and in the film, kind of reflects that we didn't get that st- scene of Kuba. <laughs> but I think, I think luckily, that I, I don't think it was needed <laughs> again. I think it would be a bit too much. Like it's, again, it's go- it would have to be gore. Mm. Um, but yeah, um, let's maybe head to the end, especially because um, my uh, tablet has decided to cut my recording. <laughs> some reason I and this is like the second take and the script is much longer than I planned already (laughs) Uh, my complaining uh, besides the financial part is just me being nitpicky Uh, you can see that these are mostly small things Uh, I think this is a great movie Uh, go watch it uh, especially if you can watch it on a big screen it really helps to appreciate the details one thing is that I just like complaining uh, the second is that complaining is easier for me than pointing out all the things I appreciate and a third that this isn't an ad, I'm being honest and while I'm not a professional critic I think I'm capable of pointing out a lot of things uh, and that we should be especially critical of things we enjoy and deeply analyze them. I have not seen a film like this yet. Mm. Again, this was truly a unique experience that is hard for me to properly describe. Um, You just have to watch it to know what I mean. It has had a huge emotional impact on me watching. Uh, It both mesmerized and terrified me. Um, One last thing is that it's just amazing to see my culture represented in such a demanding and time and money consuming type of media. Uh, It is not common. They cut out most of the like patriotic related to uh, side plots, uh, but I don't think you know, you know they were needed for this particular story because the movie is long as it is, um, and it's not a historical book. Uh, it just has those side plots. Um, but yeah, I I think that's all for me for now. Uh, I hope at least something that I've said was in any way useful or interesting to you. If you have any more thoughts uh, regarding this film or some smaller topic that I mentioned, uh, maybe I didn't mention something or you disagree, or uh, maybe you have any comments on the art I'm making in the background, uh, this was just a uh, quickie, uh, don't, judge it, don't judge it too harshly. I'll make something more thought out for the next video. Uh, I would love it if you left a comment in the comment section down below. And for now, just stay safe and peace!